Let's turn with me to Mark 14. Lord, we thank you for this word, Lord. We thank you for helping us to understand how we get offended. And Lord, how can we protect against being offended in the future? And if for some reason we're caught in that trap, how do we get out of offense? Thank you for your word, Lord. Thank you for your light. Thank you for lifting us out of darkness. Thank you, Lord. Father, we give you praise, Lord, and I in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, and, and as nay, we command, though, all spirits of Satan to hold their peace throughout this assembly, Lord, that each person here and those that will hear in the time to come may receive your word. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. In Mark 14, Jesus, this is near the end, and he's, he's kind of given some final instructions. And here in, um, oh, down verse 27, he tells his disciples something. Something that, if I've been following a man for three and a half years, I'm probably going to deny myself, as we're going to see here. But we know he told them the truth. Jesus saith unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered. But after that I am risen, I will go before you into Galilee. But Peter... We know this Peter hasn't been converted yet. Peter tends to speak first, think last. So Peter says unto him, Although all shall be offended, yet will not I. And Jesus saith unto him, Verily I say unto thee, that this day, even this night, before the cock crow twice, thou shalt deny me thrice. A couple things I want to talk about here. Jesus starts off using the word offended. He says, all ye, you'll be offended tonight. Now, he didn't specify the type of offense. Okay? But he gives us a clue. He says, uh, smite the shepherd and the sheep shall be scattered. So you can imagine, more than likely we're dealing with that we know, fear. Right? He says, when you see them come take me, you're going to run. You hear what he's saying. Smite the shepherd, the sheep will be scattered. So a form of offense is fear. Now, What's the result of being offended? This is what he tells Peter. The result of being offended is that we deny Jesus Christ. The result of being offended is that we deny Jesus Christ. Now we're dealing with somebody, Peter in this case, who's been with this man for three and a half years. Literally every day. Yet he tells them, you still don't get it yet. And because you still don't get it, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen in advance, so when it happens, you can understand. You're going to deny me. Fear will strike you. You'll be offended, and because you're so used to responding to your offense, you will follow what the offense tells you to do. Right? We have habits we build in the world of what you do when you're offended. Whatever the offense is, in this case, it's fear. And the answer to fear is run! Mm. Sometimes, our habit says, anger is the right response. Mm -hmm. Sorrow is the right response. Guilt is the right response. Whatever. In all those things, we leave being spiritual in Christ, and we go back into the flesh. Alright? So, that's why he's saying, you will deny me. You will no longer focus on what I've told you. You will no longer focus on the Word of God. You will go with what your habits tell you to do. Are you with me? Yeah. Let's look at an example of this kind of blowing up. Matthew 14. David actually touched on this last uh, Sunday, I believe. <coughs> Now, in Matthew 14, Jesus had commanded his disciples to 
go on ahead of them um, across the uh, the lake, and he would he would meet them later. Uh, this is down around verse 22. All right, he went up to pray. They they got on the boat and so forth. Here in verse 24 it says, but the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch, and watches start at, let's see, I think it's 6 p.m., they run for three hours, so if it's the fourth watch, it's 3 a.m. or after. Are you with me? So he's been praying a while. Because if we look, if you go back, uh, he, he sent them away right around the evening. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. Or in, 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 in modern day, we say, It's a ghost. It's a ghost. And they cried out for fear. They were offended. Okay? But straightway, Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. Mm -hmm. Straightway, the word of God was brought forth. Are you with me? We're going to focus on that a little bit later. Peter answered and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, come. By the way, if God gives you a command, if God gives you a word, then the power to do the thing he just said is available. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. One word. Come. And when Peter was come down on, uh, out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. And when he saw mm. the wind boisterous, he was afraid. Mm -hmm. And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me! And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? Mm. Now, I'm using this because mm. we all have boisterous winds mm. in our lives. Amen. Mm. Whatever it is. Okay? We have things from the world that's causing us to take our focus off of Jesus. Amen. And habit says, pay attention. See, now, notice for he sees it. Now, we don't understand. We, then we're not told, you know, how far away, okay, Jesus was to the ship. Was it just a few inches? Was it a few feet? I would think because he stopped, right, it probably was at least some yards. Are you with me? He wasn't just like right next to the boat. Because he says he walked. So I imagine this. So, so, so notice for a season, he's walking on the water. Notice for a season, he's doing the impossible. Now, we know how he did it. There's a command, come. And since there's a command, the power to do was there. That's right. And as long as he stayed focused on the word of God, Amen. <laughs> he could do the impossible. Mm, yeah. But it says he didn't stay focused on the word of God. Mm -hmm. Amen. He focused back on the world. Mm -hmm. Well, the world is finite. Mm -hmm. The world has possibilities. Mm -hmm. See, for the Lord, everything's possible, so there's no possibilities. Mm -hmm. All right? So the minute he switched from impossible back to possible, well, then possible had to rule. Mm. And Apostle said, you can't walk on the water. Mm. And he began mm. to sink. Mm -hmm. I was sinking all this week. Mm -hmm. Amen. I was sinking all this week. Come on now. Because I was depressed. Mm -hmm. And I got into despair. Just, just, oh well. <laughs> no, 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 no. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, still going through life. We do it. Mm -hmm. we, we cope with stuff. We, mm -hmm. You talk to other people. You minister to other people. You say good things. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you're the one. You you're the one you minister to. Mm -hmm. Amen. <laughs> but yesterday, I'm home with 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 the, with the boys. I got two boys, and I should be enjoying my day with my boys. Mm -hmm. And I did. I wanted everything for them to just kind of y'all still there. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Technically, they aren't old enough for me to say y'all go over there. Okay. Mm -hmm. One 19 months, the other was three. Mm -hmm. So I, I, can't, I couldn't really escape, because that's really what I wanted. I wanted to escape. Yeah. But I couldn't. Mm -hmm. And my boys, me and my boys, they wouldn't let me. Mm -hmm. They'd jump it on daddy. <laughs> and I just, 